the goal of NFL Films is to be the best. We have people that work for us that are the top professionals, sports cinematographers probably in the world. The guys have got to know where to be and they have got to just be on. I mean, we're here to do one thing and that one thing is to make them look good. Remember Ed Sable in the old days, he used to say, let the film run like water. Shoot, shoot, shoot in our vault. We have 110 million feet of film. So that equals to 19,000 miles. And NFL Films at the time owned all REMs, a couple of RESs. And as we went along, we uh, started buying the SR cameras and we started buying the ones and then we started buying the SR2s and started buying the SR3s. At the end, at NFL Films here, we owned over 50 Airy cameras. If you look back in the past, there's been some of the most greatest shots in NFL history have been shot by NFL Films. Take the Immaculate Reception, where Franco Harris caught the ball and scooped, and they beat the Oakland Raiders that year to go to the Super Bowl. We were the only people that got that shot. I've always said that if, if you're not at least a 99% shooter, which means that 99% of the time you're gonna give me a good shot, a good image, something that we can work with, you're not gonna work for us. Typical week for me probably starts on a Saturday, getting on an airplane, flying to a game, shooting the game on Sunday, flying back home Sunday night, coming in early Monday morning, and usually my Mondays are spent looking at different film from different games. In the old days, I hated Monday because we used to shoot film, and I just dreaded Mondays for the fact that x-rays on airplanes, because more than once our film ended up getting x-rayed before he got on the airplane, and then you would come back and everything would be ruined. About five years ago, we decided that we were gonna stop shooting film. So we bought our first Alexa. And so I was basically the first guy to shoot a football game with an Alexa. I remember the first day I was very, very nervous about it because, you know, I've always been a film guy. You know, everybody's saying, you know, you're a film guy, why are you doing this, why are you doing this? But, you know, I figured, well, I'm gonna go out and do it. So I put my lens up, I get behind the camera and I start shooting the Alexa, and I'm going, damn, <laughs> I can actually see better on this camera than I, can, than I could see with my film camera. And I was just killing it every week. And guys are, boy, oh boy, boy, you're really having a great year. Oh, it wasn't me, <laughs> it was the camera, right? But I didn't say anything to anybody because, hey, I was gonna, you know, it, I was gonna take the accolades if I could. Every game you get some, I call them tingle shots. It's when you shoot a shot and the hair on the back of your neck stands up. And it's nice to get a few of those once in a while. I did a snow game. I love weather. If you can go out and shoot a weather game, it's nothing like it. First of all, what I shoot, I shoot a 800 millimeter lens. I follow the ball through the air and I do all, kind of all this tight stuff. And if, you know, my always great shots are if you can get a guy maybe on the 10 yard line at the end of the field and running straight at you and you're pulling focus and you pull focus till about here before you lose it. That to me is a pretty good shot. And you're shooting 120 frames a second and the shot takes three minutes, <laughs> which you'll never see. To me, I go in and I, I'll watch that shot over and over, you know, because, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's all by instinct. A lot of times it's coming at you so fast and you're racking focus so fast that you don't know what's going on, you know, and then all of a sudden you go back and you look at it and you go, oh my goodness, boy, that's a pretty good shot. All I'm trying to do is frame it and focus. I mean, to me, that's the most important thing is being able to frame it and focus it because, you know, at 800 millimeters, they get on you real fast. For each game, we usually have two operators, a top cameraman and a ground cameraman. Now on occasions, we have three or four operators. If we're doing a special shoot, we're doing wires or something, it could be a top guy, a ground guy, a guy that we call Weasel, and he's, his responsibility is to shoot everything around the stadium other than action. The Super Bowl, I had 46 cameras working because we had nine wires, we had, uh, uh, I think it was 13 ground cameras. We had end zone cameras. We had three weasel cameras. So a lot depends on what the importance of the game is. There's nothing that's more gratifying to me is to watch the Super Bowl show and see 
a play that we have five or six different angles of that play, and they're all perfect. Who else does that? It's great. You know, it's just, I love that. It's great.